Greetings friends and welcome to Eurogamer. My name's Ian Higton and today I'm going to be playing a little bit of Thymesia for you. I think that's how you pronounce it. Thymesia? Thymesia? I'm going to pronounce it Thymesia because then my uh, my subtitle for this stream, Mesia Gonna Die, kind of works. Uh, it's a Jar Jar Binks joke mixed with the fact that um, this game is a Soulsborne style game. It's very hard and uh, you will die a lot in this game. Um, and I've had quite a bit of early access on Thymesia. I've played it on PC, I've played it on PS5, which I am playing on, or I'm gonna be playing on in a second for this stream, and it is a game that I really want to be able to get into, and I really want to um, be good at, and there's always, I always just about feel like I'm getting there. And then I hit this roadblock, which is the first boss of the game, and I cannot beat it. I've tried to fight. I've tried to beat that boss literally about a hundred times. I've got an hour's worth of capture of me just trying to trying and failing at that first boss, and I don't know why I can't beat it. I, I there must be something I'm not getting about the gameplay mechanics, but during the actual run up to that boss. Um, I feel like I have got the gameplay mechanics and I'm doing all right. And, but something about that first boss is just a massive roadblock for me, which is spoiling my enjoyment of the game a bit because I can't get past it and it's aggravating me. Um, so, first off, if you're a fan of really hardcore Dark Souls, Soulsborne style games, you should get a lot out of this. But if, like me, you're kind of average at these kind of games, I would issue a little bit of a word of warning because, um, you know, maybe it'll be, but maybe once people play this a bit more, and there are, um, oh, let me turn the, the volume down for you. Maybe after uh, playing this, or maybe after more people have played this, and there are walkthroughs and things uh, available, maybe. I'll be able to learn where I'm going wrong, but I've just been, yeah, I've just been banging my head against the wall. Um, oh, sorry if you couldn't hear me then. I was just moaning about how I was a bit crap at this game. Uh, but thankfully, the first boss doesn't come until a little way into the game, so uh, I should be able to get 90 minutes out of this before I, um, I hit that brick wall that is really um, destroying my enjoyment of this game. Uh, because I, I feel like it's a game I should be loving. And, uh, and I, I don't know what I'm doing wrong with it. But uh, let's go into this game anyway. Uh, and oh, I do not want to override save slot one. No, no. Please, no. New game. There we go. So we're going to start from the very beginning anyway. And uh, check it out. So this is, uh, like I said, it's a Soulborn, Stolzborn style game. Uh, developed. Uh, who's it developed by? Can't remember. It's published by Team 17 anyway. And it's kind of gone under a lot of people's radars. I was uh, attracted to it because I'm always on the lookout for a new kind of Soulsborne game to try and punish my way through. Uh, and also it's kind of got a, quite a nice gloomy aesthetic, a mix of, I don't know, uh, Dark Souls and uh, Bloodborne and maybe kind of a bit of Sekiro as well. Um, but here we go. In the beginning, people thought it was just another infectious disease. It wasn't until livestock began dying and those who had been infected began shrieking out in pain that they realized a deadly plague had befallen them. The various kingdoms tried to fend off the sickness and ghastly creatures, but their efforts were futile and despair engulfed the entire continent. Hermes' kingdom, founded atop a colossal tree, quickly rose to power due to their use of a miraculous alchemical science which was able to turn the plague into a cure. As the plague ravaged the lands, they relied on this alchemy to light the blessed flame. But where there is light, there will always be shadow. Ellipses. Thanks for Super Chat, Marissa J. EG and this community are an integral part of my self-care. There should be government funding for you to access. Oh, thanks, Marissa J. We've also had a Super Chat from Alex Samaras as well. It says, so you set into deeper doo-doo with the first boss, Oki Day. <laughs> yes, I sure am, Alex Samaras. Oki Day, indeed. And uh, Phil Tyler says, hello, Ian, and mods in chat as well. Hello, all. 
Hello all. So, hopefully I haven't done the audio down too much. The audio was fine, and then uh, turns out when I started the stream, the uh, that music just ends up being a crescendo of an orchestra, which drowned me out a bit. So, basic controls. So, uh, it's a third-person brawler game. Or action RPG, maybe. Uh, administrative order. Due to the recent epidemic outbreak, Hermes Kingdom is declaring a state of emergency. All citizens must abide by the following orders. All citizens are forbidden from going out. Essential supplies will be distributed by the Knights. Any sightings of plague-like symptoms or mutations must be immediately reported to the Knights to be dealt with. Any corpses or unclean objects must be handed over to the relevant personnel for incineration and purification. Effective date immediately. So we're in a plague-ridden town. I'm wearing a kind of crazy plague mask, and I've just picked up a crumpled up pieces of piece of paper. It says, "Follow the commands and search for the cause." Okay. So uh, I'm going to skip through these. So um, in terms of combat, it's very uh, basics are quite similar to Dark Souls. Circle on the controller will dodge. And then you can chop away with your sword. As you notice there, though, what the difference here is, is that when I attack this fella, his health went down. His white health bar went down, and it was replaced by a green health bar. And then when I left him alone, his health regenerated. So this is a, a bit of a new kind of combat mechanic for these types of games, which adds a lot of pressure, because these enemies can recharge their health if you don't constantly attack them. But... We have something coming up. We're going to gain something in a bit that will help us with that a great deal. Uh, in terms of graphics, as I was saying, it's kind of a, it's a bit of a like a, an indie game, you know, double A kind of style. The graphics are very bloodborne though, you know, kind of like Victorian England, but all murky and grimy and gross. And currently. It's not too challenging. Now, L1 is the parry move. I'm never very good at parrying in these types of games. Could explain why I'm finding the boss super hard, to be honest. Uh, there's lots of notes that are consumables on the um, on the floor. They fill in a bit of lore for you. Let's try and uh, parry. Fucked it. So bad at timing the parries. Uh, and you can find loads of different bits of lore dotted around. Some of them, like this administrative order, are repetitive. Uh, you, you'll find a lot of the same notes pinned around. Most of the interesting stuff is on the floor rather than on the walls. Face an enemy to lock on. We know this already. But you can, if you move the right thumbstick, switch between enemies. I missed a couple of super chats from earlier, says Nightcat. Oh, damn. Well, they may have to stay missed, I'm afraid. Because uh, if I'm going to get to the boss, I need to buck up my ideas and get going. All right, L1, defeat enemy attacks. There we go. Are they? Are there any? Do they? Oh, there we go. Go, go, go on, go for it. Be the times thymes Ian, says Marcus. The Weird, who's a member for 45 months. Uh, Phil Tyler says, hello, Ian, and lovely mods. I think I got them all now. Right. Let's carry on. How's the... Uh, hopefully the audio's okay now. Not too loud. So I've got the gate open. And, oh, you're the devourer. Wield your claws. Tear apart the cursed bodies. So the claw attack is what is going to help me uh, stop enemies from recharging their health. If I attack this fellow and bring his health down a bit so he's got loads of green left, what I can do is I can attack him with my claw, which then reduces that green bar and limits the amount that character can then recharge its health. As you'll notice when I press when I press the right trigger, there is a bit of a warm-up time, so it leaves you vulnerable for like a second or so. So you have to kind of balance the claw attacks with, uh, you know, the enemy's attacks. You don't want to do it too close to maybe uh, a fast-hitting enemy because you're just going to get your uh, your attack broken. Um, also, another thing about this which you can use the claw for is reaving a plague weapon. So while this guy is stunned, if I hold down the claw until 
it kind of flashes, then what I've done is I've kind of pulled his weapon off him. Now, now that is, um, oh, I better move myself, actually. I'm covering the, um, ooh, wrong one. If I move myself to here, you can see that on my left there. I've got an axe. Now, that axe is a plague weapon that I've just pulled off that other enemy. So, if I find another character, this plague weapon is now a one-hit or a one-use attack. Which can deal a lot of damage depending on what uh, weapon you have... Oh, I went the wrong way there. ...have uh, pulled off someone. So, this person here that I'm attacking, they actually had a knife on them. So now I have a knife as a plague weapon. Um, the King's Dagger and the Grey Armour, they're our last hope. They led the survivors and tried to make things right. The infected corpses were burned to purify them of sickness. A kind of soul reaver vibe, uh, says Volpers Obscura. Yes, definitely. Okay. Now. Which way am I going? So this, this is uh, kind of like the tutorial level, so... Um, it's not too tricky yet and there is going to be a boss at the end of this that uh, is possible to defeat but it's the it's the standard Dark Souls style boss that you can you can probably beat it but it will generally kick most people's asses and you'll die and you were supposed to die uh, so here is the Thymesia's version of a bonfire it is a chair with a lantern on it, um, and then when you've lit it, this little ghost comes off it, and it lets you sit on the chair and have a rest. Now, at the moment, I can't do anything, but later on, I'm going to be able to use these chairs to level up, unlock talents, upgrade my plague weapons, upgrade my potions. Don't know what a Forgotten Feather is yet. I've not got that far yet, and Cease Recall is kind of like each level is a memory, and you can... Um, you can return back to a main hub world but we'll show you more of that later now here is another mechanic it's called uh, feather attacks this is how you parry um, critical attacks from enemies critical attacks are basically unstoppable um, or unblockable unless you move out of the way um, or Use a feather. So you can throw a feather at an enemy that's about to critical attack you. Now, it's L2 to throw a feather, and you only have a certain amount. Ball bags. Ball baggingtons. I'm blocking that as well. <laughs> I'm still blocking that. Where can I go? I don't want to... I'm... Hi! Uh, hello? <laughs> I've got three... Four! Three feathers! Oh, shit! Oh, okay, I got, I got out of its way there when it did a critical attack, thankfully. Oh, wow, how rude. I've got three feathers, basically, and they do recharge after use. Right, is he gonna... No, of course. He hit me. No, I'm not very good at doing that. Let's eat some health up on the D-pad. There we go. Use my feather to block that attack. It stunned him a bit. And it has allowed me to fight back, and now I'm gonna rend his health, and I'm going to use his uh, sword on him. Actually, so you don't always uh, have to kill an enemy to be able to rend their weapon off him. As you see, I rendered this guy's sword off in mid-battle by using a fully powered claw attack. There we go. He's dead, and I've unlocked the key to the cemetery now. Um, also above the feather, you'll see just there that I've got one of three. That's my health potions. I've got one of three health potions. That I kind of is it. Is it annoying if I'm sat right here? Hopefully not. Normally I like myself at the edge, but gives you a little bit um, of an idea of what the things are. I'm surprised your eye designers haven't bothered to consider streaming yet, says Nightcat. I know, I guess I could put myself all the way up here, but... Oh, that's the wrong thing! I guess I could put myself all the way up here, but then it looks... Um, I mean, does that... Can I? I don't know. Sod it. I'm just going to put myself down here. I don't care. I'm going here. 
I'm comfier down here. Okay, you've made that look easy, says Rebecca Nicole. Hey, <laughs> I, uh, I've done this bit a few times, <laughs> to be fair. Now, oh, I've only got one. I've only got one uh, health potion left. That side. But I can remedy that by going and having a little rest, of course. Now my health potions are back up to three. Thankfully, this guy that I fought, he was quite a toughie. Um, and he won't respawn. So just like in Dark Souls, the Soulsborne style games, occasionally you'll come across an enemy that's a lot tougher than the others. He'll give, they'll give you a, a bit of punishment, but once you finally destroyed them, they won't come back again, which is nice. How did all this begin? They said it was an accident. Uh, they said that an accident occurred on the day of the king's birthday. Previously, the plague was only spreading outside the kingdom, but after the outbreak, we all have gone mad! So I believe this area was actually available on a Steam demo as well. So uh, some of you may have seen this area in action before. I could be wrong, though. Um, there's multiple routes to go here. There's only one main route to go. But I'll um, maybe I'll pop down here quickly and just see if there's anything else to pick up. This is I believe this is a dead end as well. I'm going to use this on my sword on him. Oh, Dukin! And I'm going to rend him. Take my claw, pull his health off. Oh. There we go. And he's stunned. And let's get a spear off him. I already had the spear off him, to be fair. And then you see each weapon acts um, slightly differently. If you knock the enemies down to, like, no white bar of health, they become stunned, like that guy was. And it gives you a, about 30 seconds or so to charge up your claw attack and rend their weapon off them. If you don't want their weapon, like, I don't really like the knives that those women carry, you can just murder them straight up anyway, just by hitting them a bit more once they're stunned. The pathway to all regions of the kingdom are either lined with monsters or blocked by soldiers. None can leave and none can enter. Ooh. So this is a bit of a dead end down here as well. So we need to head up now. So heading up here. Oh, wait. Do I have the knife? Oh, I do have the knife. Whoops. I rendered the knife by accident. Oh, the Surge games. I quite like the Surge games. Yes, it is kind of like the Surge games, how you can pull the weapons off the uh, the robots as well. You can pull the limbs off and things of people and use their limb machinery to upgrade your own machinery. Surge 2 is way better than the Surge 1, though. This is the battle where I will die. And yeah, there's not a huge amount of items to pick up in this game, really. I've heard... I, I checked out someone else's review, and um, they said it was only about 10 hours long. That's 10 hours long if you're good at the game, I'm going to say, because uh, I think... Like, I I think my first save is about two and a half hours, but that doesn't seem to count um, the insane amount of time, like, all the reloads and stuff. Because I've got, I've got way more than two hours worth of capture. Like, uh, one hour of capture is is just me getting my ass handed to me by or Orcus or Orcus or whatever the first boss's name is. Ouch! Okay. Did he mess me up then? Yeah, I'm dead. I think he got one hit on me and... That's it. Dead. <laughs> so, um... I'm off to Philosopher's Hill. Philo Sophers Hill. Did you finish Sekiro, Ian? Says Cloyster Pete. I did not. Game audio is a little bit peaky when it gets really loud. Okay. Seems to be a hard one to balance the audio of this one. It's either really quiet or really loud. Let's bring it down to 20. Maybe that'll be a bit better. Ian, you make me feel better about my gameplay with insanely tough bosses. Is that... Is that... Are you being nasty? Is that a nasty thing you mean? I don't know... You saying I'm crap? <laughs> Hello, young A's me. Corvus, you're finally awake. I was worried about you. You were badly hurt. Luckily, you made it back in time. 
Corvus, do you remember what you did? Uh, you need the right formula to use Hermes answer. It would appear that the injury caused you to lose your memory, so perhaps it would be helpful to start with a description of what you still remember. Come back when you've got your memories in order. Until then, walk around. It might help jog your memory. So this is kind of like the hub world of uh, Thymesius. Find a little bit of lore lying around. It's quite pretty. Kind of empty at the moment, so I'm presuming, and I don't know this for sure, but I'm presuming characters you meet along the way will end up um, residing here and allowing you to chat to them a bit more. Maybe some of these areas will open up a bit more as well because um, there's a fair few bits are locked off. Lots of lore lying around as well. Like I can't, can I get up? I can't get up there. If I go this way, this is this is blocked. There's a there's a suspiciously closed gate up here that I reckon may open at some point. Ancient words by the gate. Is it is the exoration of former kings. He who examines himself shall never be lost. Yeah, I'm not lost now. Uh, I found it, and uh, that's kind of all that there is in this area at the moment. If I'd have ever managed to get past the first <laughs> world, <laughs> maybe I'd know if there was a bit more in here. But uh, that boss. It's just, I can't do it. So, every level, though, is a, is a memory. The first memory is the Sea of Trees. So, let's go searching for calls. Uh, calls, even. All right. Okay, so the Sea of Trees is um, very murky and dark and brown and plaguey, but this is where it really starts to become or start feeling like a Soulsborne game with uh, a level that kind of interconnects and tangles up and is at first like a labyrinth that doesn't really make sense and then after a while you kind of, you understand where it's all going and um, what joins back to what. I found a beacon and I do have some memory, sh what are they called? I can't, memory shards, yeah, I do have some memory shards and I should be able to level up so I'm going to level up my strength and my vitality for now. So you're going to level up your strength, your vitality, and your plague. Uh, strength does your attack damage and your, your amount of wounds. Vitality does your health. And plague does the claw damage and your energy. Your energy is kind of like your stamina, I guess. Uh, but not... It's used for... Um, it's used for plague weapons and things, but I can explain more of that later. I'm going to apply these two upgrades anyway, and I'm going to go back. Now, because I've leveled up twice, that also has allowed me to unlock talent. Every time you level up, you unlock uh, a talent point, and I am going to... What am I... Where am I going to put them? There's a lot of plate. There's, there's a lot of different options here. I'm going to do more damage with my saber. Oh. I'm going to do more damage with my saber and do a little saber combo as well. So those are the two I've learnt for now. And cease recall now, that means that'll take me back to that hub world. Well, there we go. Right. It's time to advance. Oh, it, it's locked. I can't open it from that side. That obviously means at some point we'll loop back round. This is like a plague-ridden Ewok village, this level. So, um, you know, it's up on treetops. I haven't seen any Wookies or anything, or any Ewoks yet, but they could be around, you never know. And just like Dark Souls-style games, 
There are things to pick up as well. That was a collection of memories, which is a consumable just like, like uh, you know, Soul of a Lost Warrior or whatever. Uh, you consume them and they give you extra memories, uh, which you can use then to buy level ups. Oh, oh crikey. Never played weapon, dickhead. Ooh. See, she was a bit fast there with a knife. Stopped me from rending her with a full claw power up. But then I got her knife. It allowed me to stab this guy. Normally when they're not completely dead, but low health, you, you can just kill them with a, a rend attack. But sometimes it doesn't work and it just stuns them. Tattered Twilight Circus recruitment ad. Hmm. So there's something about a circus going on in this level, you say? All right. Fight weapon! And also, kind of like the surge, actually. After a while, when you kill people and rend their weapons off them, you start getting upgrade points for those plague weapons. So the more you rend weapons off people, the higher you can level them up. So that is quite surgery, actually. Several days ago, some mysterious visitors arrived in the village, hoping to talk with me. I never had a good feeling about the people from above. After all, they are the ones who abandoned us. But they are royal guards. I could not just avoid them. They asked me a lot about the circus. Uh, there don't seem to be any backstabble, visceral attacks, Stephen Rounce. Not that I've managed to do. Anyway. None, none that I've had a tutorial for, at least. I think if you parry successfully, you can kind of um, stun them and stagger them. See, I just parried that guy in it. Just kind of made like a metallic... Oh, balls! I died. I wasn't even checking. I wasn't even paying attention to my health there. Made a kind of metallic noise and he staggered for a bit, but it didn't um, give me an option to kind of do a visceral attack on him. So I've lost my memory shards now. I need to get back and reclaim them before I die again. Standard Soulsborne zings. Those plague weapons can affect multiple people at once if they're all grouped together as well. Wait, what's that down there? Is that just the note on the wall? Or have I missed a collectible? Oh, there we go. That's a hand axe. So that's skill shards for the hand axe. Uh, I must have rendered that off someone and not realised. Those um, skill shards will come in useful next time I'm at the chair, the chair of care. There we go. We've got you. Plague attack you. Rend the last of his health off. So there's another. There's a big clown beta rama. Oh my god. So again, some more hand axe skill shards there as well. And that little. Whatever the fungal growth was my, uh, was my memory shards. Now, there are multiple routes to go. Now, there's about three routes to go. I've chosen this route first because I think it kind of leads back to uh, the beginning. Just to show you that it does link up again. Boff. Here we go. So... More skill shards. Now, there is an empty box next to me. At some point, I'm going to be able to... I might even be able to do it now, but I have to do it at a chair. At some point, I'm going to be able to equip a... Um, a plague weapon that I can use over and over again um, depending on how much which direction energy I have that green bar at the bottom there is my plague weapon energy which shows me how many kind of uses 
I can have on that plague weapon. Tree script, tree blessed's manuscript. The exiled have created a settlement that surrounds the sacred trees. These towering deities protect us. Oh, well, don't want to drop down there, but I could drop down here. Another Twilight Circus poster. And what do we have here? It's the tree! It's the, the chair! It's the shortcut! So let's have a rest now at this shortcut and uh, check out the plague weapon. So um, I needed three hand axe uh, skill shards to unlock. I've got four, so I'm going to unlock the hand axe and I'm going to equip it. Now, if I get three then six, then nine, whatever, um, skill shards. I think it might be three, 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 actually, rather than three, six, twelve. Uh, anyway, the more skill shards I get, the higher up I'll be able to upgrade this plague weapon. And as you can see over there, there are loads of different plague weapons. The more weapons you rend from enemies, the more skill shards you get, the more weapons you'll be able to unlock. And then... You can kind of come back to these chairs and you can equip plague weapons depending on your situation. So the flying axe, the hand axe, is just uh, you know a bit of a melee weapon. It's kind of slow, one hit. Um, if I press twice, uh, square twice, I'll throw the hand axe for a bit of a, a bit of extra reach. But you've got other weapons like the lance and stuff that'll be stabbing weapons and things. So you know it's it's up to you to experiment with those kind of things. But there are plenty of them around. Uh, now I'm going to upgrade my plague, and there we go. We've got we've got even upgrades, and I've got another unspent talent point here. Let's uh, let's give myself some better dodges. Perform a second dodge. Let's let's go that one. I like to dodge in this game. And now, because I've opened up this shortcut, I can just go straight up here and carry on. Can no longer unhear shards, says Jan. I may or may not have been saying shards all along. Who knows? It's like that trick when you're um, when you're getting off a bus and you say to the bus driver, cheers! But instead of saying cheers, you actually say cheers! So let's try. Whoa! Crikey. So. Oh god. I absolutely got clattered. Uh, health? There we go. Ouch. Your weapon's mine, buddy! There we go. Okay, so he pushed me back a bit there. It's knocked, a, knocked a little health carton off me. But never mind. Still going. So as you can see now, actually, my, um, my secondary axe there is greyed out because I don't have enough energy to summon a new one. Oh, balls. I'm so bad at timing the parries in this. Oh, balls, and avoiding being hit to death. Okay. Let's see if I can do this. Now, I think I've explained pretty much everything. Try and concentrate a bit more on not getting bonked. <gasps> Ooh, he did a green attack on me. Ooh, missed him. That looks like some axe skill shards. Yeah, two hand axe skill shards on the floor. That's pretty decent. That's where I died. 
can see some interesting stuff through these windows and there's something green through there as well so again lots of um whoa lots of stuff to find if you explore the camera can get a little bit claustrophobic and hard to spot things when you're in tight areas like this, not gonna lie. Ouch. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Oh. When you use the green attack on someone who has, you know, hasn't got any green health bar showing, it doesn't do any damage. It hardly does any damage, at least. Ah, oh, they killed me. Fuck. <laughs> Oh, and it is memories. Um, if I keep saying souls, that's just because uh, it, it is—it's basically souls. Right, I need to start doing better. Is there a way to refill the energy bar? Or is it just by resting at the chair? Uh, there are ways. You have to upgrade. Uh, you have to get some skills to do it. But there are definitely ways to do it. I think at the moment, though, for me, it's just chair resting is the only thing that's going to do it for me. Ouch. Okay, this should kill him, though. Nice. Got a couple of hand axe shards. I'm actually not sure what spawns the shards, whether it's just random or whether it's to do with maybe if you're already holding a, a plague weapon, potentially. Okay, she's stunned. Oh, she came back again. My axe! So there we go, got some knife skill shards there. Reclaim my memories. Now I get to see what this little collectible was here. It's notes on Hermes Life, Sea of Trees 01. So a little bit of lore there. A little bit of base, a little bit of lore. And we've also got the Twilight Circus recruitment ad through there. I've seen that before though, I think. Run this guy and maybe use a plague weapon on you. And good riddance. It's a bad rubbish. And there's a collection of memories as well. I think this is a dead end up here, but there might be some schnaffles, maybe. Maybe not. That'll be a no. How very uncaring. Now, these things are a bit weird. These are poison balls. As you can see, when I walk in, I start getting plagued, poisoned. But I can use my feathers to blow it up, therefore rendering this area safe to go through. And you will notice that the feathers there are slowly increasing over time. So they do respawn over time. Uh, I think the little padlock by the white axe means that you can unlock a secondary uh, equipped plague weapon, but I'm not not 100% sure about that because I've not unlocked it yet, I don't think. Ah, oh, missed. This... Oh, did he kill me? <gasps> oh, man. I have not been paying attention to my um, health bar enough. Nuts. I should still be able to beat the boss. I just need to get into the rhythm of it, I think. Rhythm is a dancer. Rend your accent. Beat you. <laughs> One good thing about this game is that the, uh, the enemies don't tend to follow you for very long so if you're like oh, I can't be 
to fight these pricks over and over again. You can normally get past them to a ladder and then they don't know how to climb ladders. So you just, you just leg it right past. If you're like, no, no thank you. No more fighting those same idiots over and over again. Rend. Ooh, he activated his power move at the same time as I did my claw move, and I think I took a quite a bit of damage there. Still, loads of hand axe skill shards. I'm definitely going to be able to level my hand axe up quite a bit, I think. And... Gimme! No skill shards there, so not sure. Maybe it's just random. Whoops! Ooh, sneaky! So they got those little sneaky Dark Souls pop out from behind the corner, dickheads. These folks hiding in the uh, fog here are asking for trouble. Let's clear that out. And head in and mess them up. Oh. Lovely. So I've got a knife. A knife is a plague weapon now. Let's head up this little ladder and see what was hidden up here. Little poisony area. Okay, well, pop the balls and find out what it is. So it's an elder's manuscript, but it also gives me a collection of memories as well that I can spend just before I level up again next time. And quite a little lot of detail to the environment. Lots of candles and potatoes and overgrown bits. But it's definitely not the most colourful games I've uh, colourful of games I've ever played. Ooh. Where are we now? Oh, okay. So before we go in that big area, let's head into here. Twilight Circus poster. Twilight Circus recruitment ad. Let's sit on the chair. The chair of care. Let's do some leveling up. So plague weapon wise, I've got enough uh, shards to unlock the knife as a plague weapon. But I don't really like the knife. But however, I do have... 10? Have I really got 10? I've got 9. I've got 9 shards. So I can unlock that once. Uh, I can unlock it again. And I can unlock it again, so now um, it does 250 plus attack damage, plus 250 amount of wounds damage, and uh, if I throw it, it does 175 attack damage. So basically, I'm just making this axe super powerful. So I'm probably going to want to stick with the axe as my weapon of choice for the moment. And I'm going to do my strength, and I can't do any more than that. Unless I go into my items, find my collection of memories. I've got 22 of those, so let's just let's just smash them all down my neck, or 21 even. Bloodstained dagger. Use this item to return to the last visited beacon. And so that's like your homeward bone. There's keys to cemetery and stuff. Okay. So now I've got 2,702 memories after sucking all those down. So let's bang them all into that. Oh, look at that. Nice. All right. Let's apply that. That is going to give me quite a few talent points to unlock. So I'm going to make my saber do more damage. After performing an execution, some health and energy will be restored based on the level of the enemy. So let's try that one. I'm going to make my dodge even 
better than it was before, if I can. No. Oh, the, oh so is this a channel? Cannot unlock this talent. Oh, I see. I've kind of... You can either choose left or right for these ones. All right, so let's do that. Uh, and then step and jump for my claw. Could probably do with doing a bit more damage with my claw. Gain super armor. Oh, that sounds good. Whenever Corvus deals damage through claw attacks, more energy will be restored. It's gain some super armor that will help protect me a little bit more when I'm pulling back, ready to rend a weapon. And that's all I can do in here at the moment. So now there's going to be a little mini boss here on the PC. Oh yeah, you can refresh, you can reset everything for free. You're right, Gavin. Yeah. Uh, um, when when I played this on the PC, this boss took me ages. When I played this on the PS5 uh, afterwards, I killed him first time. So we'll see how good I get. The big bozo, the clown guy. Ooh. He tried to hit me with a green attack there. I did throw a feather at him, but I don't know if it worked. I'm using his weapon against him now, and now I'm going to rend him. Ouch, he hit me a bit. Uh, pull back and heal. Heal. There we go. Heals up on the D-pad, and... Oh, there we go. I staggered him with the feather. Heals up on the D-pad, and if you move or anything, it cancels the heal. So it's very easy to think you've healed yourself, but then not. That's my equipped hammer plague weapon. Oh god, he's a bit too close. Let's try and rend his weapon off him again. Ouch, that hurt, but I got his weapon. That's taking a lot of health off him. Oh fuck. Thankfully you can get out of the way of those green attacks because I'm very bad at using the feathers. There we go, got him. First time. You buddy. All right. Now, because I've killed him, I've got an alchemy enhancer. Which is going to allow me to now... Um, upgrade my potions, my healing potions, into things that don't just heal. Perhaps they also upgrade your energy and stuff. Let's have a look. <clears throat> um, so here we go. Plague weapon. I've got enough to unlock the hammer as a plague weapon. Step forward and smash down, causing an area attack. That sounds pretty awesome. I'm gonna stick with my I'm gonna stick with my axe for now. So I've got a general potion here at the moment, and I can upgrade it using uh, the um, potion, the alchemy upgrade. I can choose to whether to upgrade the amount of potions I have from um, three to four, the amount of health recovery, or the amount of ingredients slots. I think I'm going to do ingredient slots mainly so I can show you now that you pick from this point onwards you can pick up ingredients from encounters in, in, in places around the, uh, the game world and as you can see each potion has like three different slots and each ingredient has different kinds of effects so, for instance, the mint here has fatigue-relieving effects. So I've added that now into my potion. So my potion will now not only recover 150 health, but it will also recover uh, 35 energy as well. Uh, if I was to find some more ingredients, I could take this out and swap it out for another. Or if I want to unlock more of those, then I can make combinations of them in order to tailor my potions to my exact playstyle. Right. So, wait, did I have I got enough to level up? No, ball bags. Oh, that's not very fair, is it? Okay. Onwards. I've got 40 minutes to get to the boss. What hands me my ass every time. Actually, if I don't manage to get to the boss in 40 minutes, I can always load up my other save file and show you. Show you the boss make me cry. But, like, I think, I hope you can tell that, like, at this point, like, this, the basic gameplay 
I really enjoy. Like, I really want to get into this game. I really want to, like, I want it to click for me. And I feel like it has clicked for me, for the, the main basics of the gameplay. Like, that mid-boss was quite challenging when I first fought him. But now, you know, not, not, not too much of a trouble for me. But I just... I don't know what the fuck I'm doing wrong with the boss. <laughs> with the, the boss, I just, it just. Every time I think I'm about to defeat it, or I think I've learned a new kind of skill, or a new way to uh, attack him, it, it just doesn't work for me. I get absolutely boned, and and I think that's spoiling my enjoyment of it a bit. Hitting the dead end is is never a good feeling in a video game I feel like I should have I sh like you know I've put enough time into that boss to f that I feel like I should have killed him by now even just through sheer bloody mindedness but nah <laughs> not yet alright up we go yeah if you're a fan of rolling through boxes in Dark Souls. Not everything can be smashed, but there are a fair few barrels and things that can be messed up. As you can see. Need the key to the market secret room, you say? I want one of them. Okay, got some collection, a collection of memories there. And I've opened up this door that was previous lock, previously locked by these, this ladder. So again, the levels, you you explore far uh, far enough and for long enough and in all the darkest corners and you will find little areas that link up and areas that have you know, bonuses hidden within them. I can't, um, can't go through there yet because it's all covered in, in dangerous fart gas. So what am I supposed to do? Well... Let's release this ladder. And I think this ladder... Yeah, so this ladder has opened up a shortcut. So this, this I've already come through this bit. But now, instead of having to go up that ladder and whatever, I can go up this ladder as a bit of a shortcut later. What is this here? A collection of memories, you say? Well, thank you. Blech. I think my super armor worked out there for me. Oh. So I dodged his uh, I dodged his critical attack rather than use the feather didn't mean to, that's just what my muscle memory did for me. Good job I saved the feathers though, because that's the fart gas avoided. That is another weapon, that's another <laughs> lol, another axe rendered. What have we got around here? We've got a consumable, a collection of memories, and a rather sad lady who is now a rather dead lady. So if we drop down here, this is the area that was previously covered in fart gas. It is now open for me to wail on these idiots. Didn't mean to do that. Meant to do that. Now I can do that. She killed that guy and a little bit of my health went up thanks to the skill I unlocked earlier. Kill you, I don't want your knife. Whoa, where did you come from, buddy? Oh, wrong one again. And pull this heart out. Nice. So we've got a, a locked door here. That's a, a, a drawbridge up there. We've also got something here. Let's climb down here and see what's down here before we go anywhere further. I think this is just a little extra bonus area. 
Yeah, there's a ladder there. So there should be something in this in this barrel. Fennel. So we've got an extra ingredient for the uh, for the potion now. So I could swap the mint out for the fennel next time I rest at a chair. Or if I upgrade my potions ingredient slots again, I could put both the fennel and the mint in there to create a wonderful concoction, I'm sure. All right, there's nothing else going on down here. Um, I do probably should ha heal up, though. <laughs> because this is a Team 17 published game, people are... Uh, saying, is there going to be a concrete donkey <laughs> as a plague weapon? A worm's born, you say? Maybe. Maybe. Are they to all 407 people joining right now? There is a lot of um, lot of uh, excellent indie games releasing at the moment. Uh, Roller Brawl, is it? Came out today, which got an essential review on Eurogamer. Don't know. Ugh. If Eurogamer is going to fuck review this one. Oh, you bastard. I don't know if Eurogamer is going to review this one. Um, but uh, hopefully my gameplay will be able to show you whether or not this is a game that you would uh, quite like to play. Okay, so I died. I've gone back to the chair. Um, but maybe we can see what fennel does. Fennel gives me an extra 46 health recovery. So I think I'm going to put the fennel in there for now. Now I just need to make my way back to my uh, memories. And I can now use this ladder that I unlocked before to skip past a bunch of enemies. Like I said, they can't climb ladders. They're very stupid. And now I'm not too far away from where I died before. Rend myself another spear. Is anyone going to sneak up behind me? Sometimes they do. They seem very angry. Got your knife! So this is where I died. Whoa. This guy is actually a tough one. As you might be able to see. Oh, he's just bloody healed himself, I think. Yikes. Yikes, fuck! Oh, man. I got stuck behind that wall. I was desperately trying to... Um, move backwards so I could uh, heal up, but it didn't work. There we go. See you later, Cormac McCoy! Thanks for watching. Uh, the character is... Well, I don't know if the character is a Plague Doctor, but... He's definitely wearing a Plague Doctor's mask. It's called Corvus, which I believe means crow. Is that right? Right, your knife, madam, was rubbish, so... Let's not have the knife. Let's go in with a couple of axes. Axe him a question. Come on. Okay. Threw my axe at him there. Oh god! My right trigger is not activating properly. That's what I'm going to say. Every, every time I... have to be quite um, tough with the pressing down on the right trigger. Fuck. Maybe it's running out of batteries. Atmosphere is, a, is creepy, but not in an icky, nasty way like Mortal Shell. Says um, 
from Botchelin. I do like Mortal Shell. I've got to say, Mortal Shell, I, I prefer the visual styles of Mortal Shell to this. I'm hoping that if I ever get past the, the first boss, <laughs> I'm hoping that um, the visual style gets a little bit more colourful. It's a bit too brown and dingy for me, this level. It's I like a bit of colour in my games. This is uh, this is so sepia. It makes me weepier. Right, it's your time now, buddy. down. Oh. He's never fallen down for me before. Oh well. Gives me a bit of a break. <laughs> I'm gonna fight him in the world's smallest area now. This is gonna be this is gonna be tricky. I can't see what the fuck is going on. Heal, heal. Heal, heal. Heal. <laughs> After the stream, if you have the ability, take the controller apart and check the position of the trigger's silicon pad and spring. I might have to do that. Um, I've got a little screwdriver -y thing. I'd have had him then if, I hadn't have, if he hadn't fallen down into the world's smallest battle arena. That guy is, he is quite tough, that guy. Someone's definitely trying to sneak up on me now, yeah. And yoink! Mine now. Okay. Little asshole. attack on me then. Stop it! Oh no, fuck! Parry me, little asshole. What? Shit, fuck! I, you little fuck! How come he can fall off there and I can't? That was bullshit. I tried really hard to jump off the edge then to nope out of that fight. And uh, I just got stuck on the edge. So that's not cool. This douchebag has always given me problems on both the PC and the PlayStation version. Not in this specific way, where the level is also fucking me. <laughs> Alright, shit for brains. You made me lose all my lovely memories this time. Pissed.
Don't you do it! Oh, you look, you dumbass. <laughs> oh, great. He's stuck, there for, he's stuck there forever now. Awesome. He died. Well, thanks, Glitch. <laughs> for once, for once a glitch, I don't mind. <laughs> Phil, uh, that might have been a little bit of a, a cheap, <laughs> cheap win there, but I take it. I'll take it. That area here needs some fucking patching. That's what it needs. Is there someone there yet? That dickhead won't respawn again, thankfully. That dickhead's uh, quite a toughie. QA tester Ian back in the game, says Claire T Rex. The game just gave up, says Argyle Raihan. Yeah, it did. It was being kind to me. Thank you, video game. There are multiple routes to go here as well. Oh, they all lead to the same place. So I'm going to go down here first, tidy up some fools, and then uh, go a different way. Maybe. Unless I get fucking. Murdered by this dickhead. <laughs> Maybe I will get murdered by this dickhead. Okay. That's all my health shards gone now, though. Axe, please. Thank you. Right, so the only way to go now is to, like, jo drop off down to the bottom. But if I drop off down to the bottom that way, I don't get that little shiny bit of loot there. Ouch. Cruel. Oh, my God. Give me the loot. Shit, fuck! Oh, pop, 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 pop. Ah, oh, he got me! There's actually a really hard enemy down the bottom there. I was hoping I'd get to him. Uh, jokes aside, this is a clever way to resolve bugs. Making bugged enemies die helps, but the player gets rid of the problem for you. Yes! No, that is it's excellent. I thought that character was just going to hang there forever. So, um, I'm glad that it died. I'm very glad that it died. This is a nice looking blight dance, says Angel Deep. Sure is. It's a blight town, it's a fight town. Again, I've been through this area shitloads now. So I'm just gonna run. And hopefully, they won't follow me off the edge here. And there's my. There's my mems, my fresh mems. I've got myself a nice axe off that dude and a hand axe shard. Sweet. Oh, you do lots of damage with drop attacks, it seems. Which is nice. I know there are a fair few enemies around here. I don't know why I did a claw attack then. Fuck. Some more memories. Pretty sure there's a couple of low level enemies lying around. And I don't want to aggro them at the same time as this guy! Uh, 
was level one. Give me your axe, buddy. Could use it against this dickhead. So his unblockable attack is that hammer move. Actually, do you know what? Let's heal up a bit. Because this guy, unsurprisingly, does a lot of damage. Rather too much on this dude because he's nice and easy to dodge. Ouch. Except for when he does that. And that. Oof. Got him. So I've got an alchemy enhancer now as well, so I can upgrade my potion again, and I can upgrade my fisting skills. I think this might be a dead end through here. From what I remember. A collection of memories, though. Yeah, can't open this cage yet. So we head around here. Um, is this a dead end? Yeah. Where's the? La there's a ladder up somewhere. <laughs> That's behind these two. These two idiots. Don't you scream! I said no screaming. memories. I'm actually, uh, from what I remember, I'm kind of close-ish to the boss now. So before I go to the boss, I got um, from the dude that I totally legit killed. I got a, uh, a key, which is going to help me unlock an area. Oh, f oh, okay, I forgot about this bit. <laughs> it's another slight kind of mini boss there, which I don't want to, I don't want to aggro just yet. Let's go. So what I need to do is double back. So can I do it here? Yeah, here we go. Remember this area? It's where the spiky dude died. Where I killed him legitimately. Oh god. That's where I left everyone alive. They're just huddled up looking angry. Uh what am I looking for? What am I looking for? I am looking for this area here. So these barrels here, you may remember. Am I going to have to kill you? These barrels here were hiding this door, which previously was a secret door and now it is unlocked. And inside is an NPC that says, Corvus, do you remember me? Hello, Emerald. No, I don't remember you. Probably not. I'm Emerald. I also have a little credit for your presence in this world. You have unlimited potential. Maybe we should see this conversation as an opportunity. Corvus, do you have something you want to ask? Oh, no. So I have nothing, I, I don't know what this, I don't know what this NPC is for. Uh, Corvus has never had anything to ask when I've met them, but they have a lovely feathery uh, cloak on and they just wait there. So 
what I'm presuming is maybe they'll appear back in that hub world. Um, if I ever get back there, if I'm ever good enough to get back there, which I don't think is a possibility. Oh, I missed a super chat. Thanks to super chat. Jay Toy says, Crow themed haiku for Plague Doctor themed game. Uh, missed our Corvus. Lonely in chat without them. Watch them fight in game. Was that anything? Sorry, I'm not a poet. I mean, that worked. That was that seemed pretty haiku to me, although I probably read it wrong. Okay, so now we can go down here, finally. Um, I believe this is a... Oh, yeah, that goes back down to that big arena at the bottom where I fought the punchy fisty guy. Let's light this chair up. And I can... Um, Oh no! Wait, before I before I do that, I've got thirteen collections of memories here. So let's smash them all down the throat. I think that's how I think that's how you remember, isn't it? You eat me no, maybe not. Uh, so I'm going to level up. Ooh, okay. Bop, 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 bop. Boop, 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 boom, bop. That leveled up quite a few times there. Unlock talents. I've got three talent points to unlock. I'm very bad at defending, but maybe I should... put something in my defense. Claw. Game one stack offensive, defensive buff. Weather cor Whenever Corvus, Corvus deals damage, more energy. Is there nothing that... I thought there was one... Press R2 again. I thought there was a way to upgrade the power of your claw, but maybe I'm wrong. Strategies. Maybe it was on this. Uh, after taking this, taking damage, small amount of energy will be restored. Extends the time taken before enemy wounds start healing. Gains a second slot for plague weapons. Unlock through skill shards. I won't do that yet. <laughs> Let's give ourselves a bit of time to batter enemies. Okay, is that all the... Yeah, so plague weapons. Look at this. Loads of plague weapon stuff now. I've nearly unlocked the axe to full. Now I just need one more ac hand axe. Uh, I can level up the knife to two. I can open up... What's this? The spear. And level the spear up to the second thing. And... I can also unlock fisting, which is nice. And I have uh, an upgrade as well. I think, as much as it would be nice to have an extra ingredient slot. Oh, I've got two. Oh, there we go. Well, there you go. I've done both. So I've got, it's going to recover more health and uh, I've got four potions now, which is nice. But any uh, any more leveling up I need to do of these, I now need two um, alchemy essence things instead uh, instead of just one. So I'm pretty much sorted. I've reached the area where the boss is. I've got 13 minutes to get my ass handed to me over and over again. Uh, so enjoy my pain. Can't believe you also say cheers to bus drivers. My <laughs> wife hates me for this, says Adrian Fitzsimmons. You're not from Oxford, for, by chance, are you? All right, here we go. You circusy bastard. Come at me. As I said before at the start of the game, while I was obscured by the audio slightly, this is the point. I can't. I, this is the roadblock in the game for me. If I get past this, uh, I'll be very surprised and incredibly happy. But um, as much as I have been enjoying the game um, up until this point, um, I can't. I, I've not been able to get past it, and it, it has got quite aggravating for me. So, if you're someone who really likes punishing Soulsborne-style games, and you're very good at them, you probably won't have a problem with this. I read a review of this game um, where they said that it was from this boss fight onwards that the game really clicked for them and opened up. So they must have, they must be doing something I didn't do, or they must just be better than me. Uh, but I can't. I, this boss fucks me every time. 
<laughs> so what I want to do, which will help me out a lot, is if I can rend his power off him. Which I might have done then. Yes, I've done it then. So his power now, it allows me to move like him. So it's nice and easy to dodge his moves. And it actually lasts for quite a while too. But he attacks so fast. And I, I'm just so bad at parrying in this game. Throw cards at me now, the dickhead. <laughs> What's that? Ow! I got distracted by loot! Bastard! Bastard! No! Don't get distracted by loot, Ian! What are you doing? Ah, oh, wasted all that, man. What is it? The asthma? Oh, that must be his power. I don't know why I did that. I wanted to activate my miasma. Reverse, 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 and... Fight you, fucker. <laughs> Oh, you shite! Fuck up! Ah, oh, asshole! Don't think I nearly killed him there. This prick has a second phase. <laughs> I did get a little bit put off by the f the schnaffles there. I don't think I've ever seen him drop miasma before, which makes me think that maybe you have to fight him a few times and uh, level up the miasma power a bit. I feel like this fight will be quite satisfying for someone who can handle this shit. <laughs> a little bit. Ouchie! Heal. <laughs> I've got another, I've managed to get another one of his powers off him, but it takes, there's a, there's a slight bit of cooldown. And you can kind of tell it's happening because the border around the fork. Oh, frick. The border around the uh, diamond was getting whiter and then it poofed into existence. <clears throat> uh. All right. Here we go again. Holy shit, I love this boss. This is Norisik and Ali. I don't fucking love this boss. I hate this boss. <laughs> ruining my enjoyment of the game. Because I can't get any further. Just can't get past it. Oh god, has he got... Has he actually got... Has he actually got three phases? I can't get past the second phase, so... Um, the third phase is just going to make me cry. Tears of despair. Eat a dick. <laughs> no, no. Fuck your cards. <laughs> Your cards. 
asshole. You think, you think, yeah, I fucking killed him, I've done it, yeah. And then it's like, no, nah, you haven't, you dickhead. You're about to get superbly boned. <laughs> Super boned, stop it, please. Don't you fucking heal. Guess I just gotta be aggressive. That's cool. Fuck! Oh shit! That's bad, that's bad, that's bad! Oh. Dead. Ah, <sighs> uh, I believe you can pause the game. Apparently this is the hardest fight in the game though. Possibly a bit in unbalanced as Claire T-Rex. That's very unbalanced and pretty stupid. <laughs> if, if you ask me. I've also, um, on my previous save, I've gone back and farmed memories to try and make myself stronger. But it's just a fuck. <laughs> I can't. I can't fucking. I just can't. You can skip this, by the way. Oh, he killed me already, there. <laughs> um. <laughs> Oh god, it's it's already it's, it's nearly three to five, so uh, yeah, let's just round up here by saying I really enjoyed the game up to this point, and it's now it's like smashing my face against a magician-shaped brick wall. Um, I'd love to be able to get past it and experience more of the game, but it's just it's like the learning curve or the difficulty curve goes like doodly doodly do, and then turns into giant mallet and fucking smashes you in the face and knocks all your teeth out, and then you're eating ice cream and candy floss for the rest of your life because that magician fucks knocked all your teeth out <laughs> um, and yeah so I lost my temper with this game a lot and um, as such my enjoyment of it diminished quite a bit um, so I'm sure many of you out there who are accomplished Soulsborns players uh, will be able to get through this fight fine if you haven't really played any Dark Souls-y type, type games before and you're not used to like really intense, uh, hard battles like that, then you're probably going to bounce off this game pretty hard. I, um, I really wanted to love it, but I can't really give a proper opinion on it because I, can, I can't get past the first boss. So um, I'm just going to have to say, seems good. But you've got to be pretty decent at games to like it. So, yeah. Um, he's going to kick my ass so bad I can see it. It's as Vulp as Obscurus. Well, uh, thank you very much, everybody, for watching. Hopefully this video has helped you decide whether or not you'd like to play this game for yourself. 
it's probably a really decent game in there. You just got to be better than me, as far as I can say. See, um, but yeah, thanks for watching, everyone. Do give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to Eurogamer for most daily videos about video games. We've got plenty more stuff coming up for you this week, so stay tuned. And I'll see you soon here on Eurogamer. Goodbye, all. Right, you stupid magician prick. I'm coming for you. Smash your f***.